everyone's going to be at a different level on the scale of how good of a husband or how good of a wife you are, but it doesn't change your role where your spouse falls on that line. You don't understand how bad my husband is, but I understand what the Bible says. And it didn't change. For your circumstance. Verse number 23, for the husband is the head, the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, women, if you want to be a holy wife, let this verse sink in. How much should the church be subject unto Christ? To, to what degree? Well, just kind of a little bit. I mean, we should at least show Christ a little bit of respect, right? No. No, of course not. It's full. It's complete. Complete submission to Christ, right? The church, we ought to be, and had any knowledge of it, that we're not doing things the way that Christ would want us to do things with his church, we would stop and change it on a dime. I mean, we would just be like, no, we got to change this. We need to get right with Christ because Christ is the head. That same understanding of the church to describe how much the wives should be to their husbands and to what extent, because it says in everything, in everything. Verse 25 speaks to the husbands. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also covered that. But this is the verse that says that, that the, that's the man's job in, in holiness as a husband to his wife, to love your wife, regardless of, of how well they're submitting, regardless of how well of a job they're doing at home. Look, man, it's your job to love your wife. And notice how both of them are tying into Christ. Submit yourselves as you submit to Christ. Love your wife as Christ loves you, right? As Christ loved the church. And then there's another purpose here, though, for the husbands, verse 26, that he might sanctify the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So Christ loves the church. He gave himself for it, but he's also leading and guiding in order to cleanse the church and make the church without spot or wrinkle. What does that mean? Without the blemishes, without the sins, right? God wants to be able to present an entire church of people, of believers, that he's worked on, he's helping through, he's helping all of us to get sin out of our life, to be able to finally present and be like, wow, what a glorious church this is. What a great church that's following me, that's, that loves me, and, and Christ is helping all of us along the way to get more cleansed and sanctified. Well, then, you know, that also would apply for the husband's role with the wife. As he is the head of the wife, he's the head of the wife in all things. Matters at home as well as spiritual matters. God has given that responsibility and duty and work to the man to be leading the home in all areas. Yes, financially. Yes, in all the major decision making. And yes, in the spiritual life too. And men, if your wife knows more about the Bible and is more you know, spiritually older than you because of their, their, their knowledge and everything else, it's time for you to grow up and grow up fast because your job is to lead at home. That's your job. That's your role. Well, it sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> what, what God thinks about men is that they need to be working. They're going to be working. And women, too, that, you know, men have their own burdens to bear. And as much as, you know, this, this world is the one, is, is who is skewing the 
the reality of, of what's like the better role and making one look worse than the as far as each role is concerned, right? The advantages of leading, you could say, well, you get to do whatever you want. Yes, but you know what? There's also the responsibility of leading too because God's going to hold the leader responsible for the whole household. So when you start thinking, oh, well, you just get to do whatever you want. Well, you know what, though? God's going to hold me responsible. How my children turn out, how my, you know, the things that happen in my home, you know who's ultimately responsible? Me. Even if my wife does something with my children and does something that's not right, I'm still responsible. Yes, she's going to have her own responsibility, too, but I also am going to be sharing the blame in anything that goes on in my house because God put me in charge with that authority. 